whoa, lots of boxes, lots of big boxes. I'm going to move some of this out of the way so I can start opening them. Let's see what we have. Fun stuff. I'll have links below to everything. All the products listed in this video will be linked. I will open this first. In this order, I had several things that were back ordered, but then some of my back ordered things from another time came in. So let's open this big jumbo thing because it's not all that exciting. I feel like I'm doing WrestleMania with the cardboard. And then it's wrapped again. Maybe I should just tell y'all what this is. needed. I got some more really big plastic bags to put my bigger works on. Paper in this for shipping because I really have to protect them well. Original works I want to protect really well. Sorry, a squirrel got my attention out there. From water damage and these are big. I've been using this company for quite a while. Where am I going to put these? I don't know. And I'm drinking some blueberry tea. I've gotten into like fruit teas lately. So good. I restocked my, what are these? Quill, silver atelier blending quill. You guys know that I like, you take one out of the package for you. I like to use these kind of, basically they're like, they're really made for calligraphy and things like that. Calligraphy, sound like I'm drunk saying that. I really love these brushes. They hold a ton of water and paint and I can just get in there and they make great marks. And I was wearing mine down to like nothing. It had all these hairs. So I got two more of those. Some paint that I had ordered a while back. Remember I ordered a bunch of acrylic whites from a bunch of different companies. I wanted to see if I liked any of them. I'm not loving any of them because they are all shiny. I forget how shiny regular ac acrylic is. The Liquitex soft body that I'm using is much more satin and matte and then i'm getting these other acrylics and i'm like ooh, shine and plastic if you remember i tried the m gram oil paints that i did love they still mess with my lungs a little bit and i'm just really loving acrylics now that i've gotten into them at least the liquitex soft body but the m gram white and the oil was the most perfect white it was such a warm beautiful white i struggle with whites and this one was not toothpaste so i thought let's try the acrylic and see if it's as warm let's just open it up and see okay i went ahead and got the i grabbed the oil paint okay this looks this is the acrylic i mean it's warmish but mm not as warm as the oil that's okay if it's got some warmth to it, it'll be easier to warm up than if it's a cooler pasty so there's that i'm filming this now but i'm weeks ahead sometimes months ahead with filming so by the time this video comes up i will have tested everything that's new and i will give you a full review like a well a really good review where i've actually used the stuff for a month or maybe two months by the time this video goes up. I'll let you know about that white. I bought some more of these. I got some of these first off at Hobby Lobby and I like the size a lot and I like that they kind of clip together. I can never have enough like travel small paint containers so I got some more of those. Now let's see what's in this thing. Just one came. Oh mm. it's different than what I thought. Okay sometimes I really hate buying online because you just can't touch things and fill things and uh, I have been using an Egbert paintbrush a good bit lately which an Egbert has this really long brush tip head whatever you want to call it so I got a couple sizes one size of back ordered yeah I think I'm gonna really like this I really like it because it's a little bit like my Chinese brushes calligraphy brushes they hold a lot of paint it gives me more distance in nice brush strokes. Basically what it boils down to is I don't have much control with this and you guys know that I like things that I don't have control of. It gives me good marks. This is what I'm most excited about. <laughs> okay, I bought a really dirt cheap, lightweight, adjustable aluminum easel. 
I'm looking forward to seeing what this is like. If you saw my review of the Leader Easel, I love it. When I was looking at the Leader Easel and looking at this thing, this was only $18 and it is lightweight. Light. I wasn't sure which one to get, so I ended up getting both. But I have a full review on a travel easel that's kind of in this tripod style. I'll put a link to that here, and I love it. But I was thinking about something super, super, super light for one, times where I have to walk and carry my stuff for a long way, or I was also thinking if this worked at all, if it wasn't too stinking cheap, if it would hold up, then maybe I would put one on our Airstream travel camper and just leave it, which would be nice because we're trying to stock that thing a little more where I don't have to pack so much. Okay, so let's open this and see. Okay, it's first off in this like really thin bag. It feels nice and light. It does though feel like it's going to be a little hard to get this back in the bag. I hate bags like that where it's like hard to get back into. The Leader Easel bag, I can just pop things in. My guess is I won't be using that bag. So it looks like it comes in two parts. This thing, my guess is I will not be using this. And then this, it is really light. It also, yeah, I mean it feels, it feels kind of cheapish. Let's see, okay. Then it looks like there's a little knobby twist right here. This comes up, you grab a board. I grabbed this painting that I'm working on. So it goes like this. It has these little legs right there. And then this comes down like that. I think that would work. These legs come out even further. Obviously, like I said, I will be trying it out quite a bit. And then at the end of the video, I'll tell you what I think about this. Definitely feels cheap. I can already tell you that. It's not like the Leader Easel. I mean, this thing feels so stinking cheap. I mean, the thing was only $18. I'm not super rough with my stuff, so we'll see. It'd be a nice option for super lightweight and compact. Let's see what this thing does. I'm not sure what this thing does. I think. Okay. I think these legs swing around and there's some little screws right here. And then this goes into that. So you could use that. For me, this is just an extra thing. Probably never use that. I feel like there should have been more stuff in all those boxes. <laughs> okay let's just open these i feel very disappointed in myself because usually i'm excited about getting our supplies but uh, i basically bought stuff that i already had and i didn't know I had our, so anyways let's just open this this big box right here let me just open it but i'm pretty sure all that is are these plastic sleeves sleeve things that i got for packaging artwork not exciting at all it's just a big plastic thing. Let's open this box that I can't even remember. Is there anything good in here or did I only buy things that I thought that I thought I didn't have? I don't know. Maybe I'll title this art spa haul, disappointing art spa. Haul. Can we talk about my bracelet? That's not disappointing. How cute is that? Uh, got that from a friend. Please let there be just something exciting. Okay, there is one thing. I decided to try some of M. Graham's at Medium because I did like some of their other products. Thought, well, I'll give that a try. So we'll see if there's any difference in that from the golden. What is the other one I use? This is what I've been using. I don't even use it a lot. It's golden's but when I use it, that's what I use, but we'll see how this goes. So at the end of the video, as usual, I will have already used it for a long time and I'll tell you what I think about it, if there's any difference. I wonder if the consistency. Sounds about the same. And thought I'd have this bright idea to try Liquid Text Heavy Body and just kind of water it down and use some of water, just water and some of the matte medium to see if I could get it like the soft body. One, why would I want extra steps if I already like the soft body? I don't know. And two, because I have a pea brain, I didn't remember that I already had that great idea and I already bought some and tried it and I didn't like the... And not only that, I ended up buying some of the same colors. Sandy. I got the Cadbury Yellow Light, which I already have. I don't have these other colors, so that's the only saving grace. The Yellow Oxide. One of the reasons I like the Yellow Oxide, that's basically just like a yellow ochre. Yeah, yellow ochre. One, it's just a nice color to have, and two, it makes a nice cream. So if you had just a 
dollop of it. Oh, I just did that just to reenact the smallness and some white makes a really, really, really nice cream. And I've been after a nice cream for, I feel like my entire life. And I finally figured that out. Quinacrino Magenta. I think the reason I decided to do all this was because I needed some more of the Quinacrino Magenta in a soft body. They were out of it in a soft body. So I thought, well, I'll get the heavy body and try it. Da, da, da. Which I've already done. Did I already mention that? I've already done that. Oh, here's the other thing I was thinking about that maybe compare the heavy body and the soft body and see if they were both as shiny or not as shiny, like if they were both satin. I did, well, I did do a swatch. Here it is. I did test it since I already had the yellow and the heavy body and heavy body and a soft. I did test it and they were, whoa, they were pretty much the same. When I do like this, the heavy body does have a li one little section that's a little shinier. So I do think that's one of the things with heavy body. People love to go heavy body because they think texture and stuff, but in acrylics, when it gets goes on too thick, there's a shininess. Even though this paint overall is, is more matte. <sighs> it might just happen and happen. So those were the three colors that I got. Oh, okay, well this is a little exciting. I forgot about this. So also, decided to get some acrylic colors in the M Gram. The reason I did that is because I really liked the white. It had some oomph. It was shinier than what I like. So I added some matte medium. Did I like it once I did that? Oh, I think that's what got me into purchasing some of their matte medium. I'm gonna try that because I do not like shiny acrylic. Ugh, I don't like it. I don't like it to look plasticky. So I thought uh, one of the things I liked about it is when I watered down the white and added matte medium, it didn't lose its oomph. It was just like the soft body acrylic. So I really liked that it had some oomph that told me it was a good paint. So I thought I'd get three colors. One color that I don't even have yet in acrylic. Hello, finally using this knocker up here and getting a color I don't have. So I'm, I got the cerulean blue yellow ochre, and quinacridum rose. Excited to see what that looks like. Ooh. Okay, that's different than what I thought. That's gonna be probably a nice pink. Yeah. And if I don't love this, I'm, uh, if I'm like stick to the soft body, then that's one, what I'm going to do, but I will use all this paint. I'll use it for sketchbooks and other things. Uh, but I think this paint is going to be really nice. I'm actually quite excited about, now I'm getting excited. Now I'm feeling it. Now I'm feeling the art haul. I think I'm going to do some mixes. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do some testing. That's what I'm going to do. That'll be a nice Friday afternoon thing to do. Okay. I'm feeling cheered up. Are you feeling cheered up? Uh, I feel like this started off being quite the rumperty romp art haul. We're all feeling a little better now, aren't we? Yeah, we're feeling better. I'll let you know about these. <gasps> oh no, I did it in the wrong one. Shoot. Bummer. I'm gonna start getting my little paint pots ready and I'm gonna add the paint. And then what I'm gonna do is just take my water bottle and slowly, that is the key, slowly add the water. Anytime you're adding anything to paint, especially water, I think, you need to take your time with it. I like to use these little popsicle sticks and after I've used them, I set them off on a glass table that's in my studio and let them dry. And then I just put them in a cute little bowl to reuse. They work great that way. And then there's also, I don't know, a little splash of color in the studio, fun little color palettes in that bowl also. The M Graham is a lot smoother, so it was a lot easier to incorporate. Right here is the Liquitex. Look how gloppy that paint is. So you really want to make sure that water is incorporated and to do it slowly. Here's what I did. I squeezed some paint into um, these little things that I get that are just basically condiment size holders and they come with lids. Squeeze some paint into each one and then added water. I did not add any medium. I want to test these out first with no medium and see how glossy they are, especially the M Graham. I want to just play around with those. This one I accidentally squeezed my two different pinks into on accident. So then I just mixed it up and got a pretty nice color but that was a little bit of a mistake. So one of the things I'm finding out by squeezing the two different brands is that I'm really loving the consistency of the M Graham. I can get it watered down or at the consistency that I like much quicker and the Liquitex is a little thicker and gloppier. 
which most people are buying heavy body for their thickness, but the M gram is just, I don't think it's even labeled heavy body, it's just acrylic paint but it does have a nice smoothness. Here's what I'm also expecting, that the M gram is gonna be higher pigmented. So I'm first going to just play around in my sketchbook. I just wanna smush some paint. I want to play around with the colors and I want to see them dried. I'm also gonna get my M gram white out, but I can't remember if I added medium or not. So I'm gonna just get some regular white, M gram white, mix some water in it, get it to the consistency that I like, and just squish paint around and see what I think. One of the ways you can tell the glossiness is not just by, well, first off, by just looking at it, but also the pages will kind of stick together if they're super glossy. So I just want to do a bunch of smearing and testing and playing, which will be a lot of fun. And then on the next page, I want to do the same thing by adding medium. And I haven't decided how I want to do that yet. Normally, I would add a little bit to the paint I am sitting here editing this video and I got to this part and I wanted to jump on here to make sure I was real clear on something that I've learned as I've been going along making my little paint pots. I've already started working on a video that's all about paint pots that will be in the future. Maybe even next week, I'm not sure. But basically I wanted to tell you that I have at times added my medium to my paint pots. I may even do that here in just a minute with these, I can't remember but I have realized that the paint starts to kind of set up or basically dry a little faster when you add the medium in the pots. I can tell just by the look of it that it's starting to dull and get thicker. Now when that happens, there's no need to panic. All you have to do is add some water little by little, stir it and kind of give it some life and it works perfectly. I've been having to do that to a lot of my paints lately because I added medium to it and it's just not that big of a deal. Sometimes you just have to do that anyways because they start getting a little dry. Now where you may would freak out is if you do like I do and dip the brush in the paint so I contaminate my little paint pots. That does not bother me. All colors except white and sometimes yellow. If my yellow is really contaminated, I won't stir that up. But the other colors, you can really just stir them up and it's not gonna matter. It just does not affect the color very much or at all. But I use my white and yellow so quickly that it never gets to a place where I need to stir it. But I do have some other colors that I just don't use as frequently and they can start getting a little, I don't even wanna use the word dry, but they start getting thick and a little congealy. That's the word I would use, congealed. That's what it looks like. Kind of even feels like that, almost like jello that's starting to kind of set up. You wanna just give them a little stir. And then sometimes my sets that I have that I haven't used in a while, like my flash paint, my acrylic gouache, some of the, the things that I just use either on sketchbooks or when I'm out camping or painting someplace, one of the things that I'll do when I open it up, I'll take a look at everybody and whoever is looking a little tired and sad. I'll just spray and take my time to kind of give everybody a little life. It's kind of like extending the life of the acrylics. So that was a long little chat there, but I just wanted to update that. I would encourage you to not put your medium in there. The way that I've been using me my medium is I'll just squirt it out on the palette or I've been using just little paper cups and little tubs as my palette, like to mix. I've been doing that lately. So my little mixes, I'll squirt some medium in there if I want it like thinned or something like that. And then that's fine because it's just a little dollop of paint. There's my tips. All right, let's get back to the normal broadcast. Is that what they say? Let's just go watch the video. I think what I'll do is do the first round, like I said, let it dry. And if it's obnoxiously shiny and I know that I will never use it in that consistency, I'll go on and add a little bit of this to each one of those. So I'll let you know what I do, but that's the plan. Does this feel like a pretty extensive plan? But this is how I like to test stuff, you know? Mm -hmm. This is how you learn your stuff. This pink is still super potent, even with it watered down. That's what I kind of had a feeling with these paints. That's really great. I mean, I just added a ton of white to that and it's still just super pink. This one where I accidentally mixed the two pinks together. Hello, that's really nice. I 
got a different sketchbook out. I thought I would let that dry and then do this, but I don't have the patience to let that dry. So I decided to take this matte medium. I just poured some out on my palette. I can tell the camera's crooked, sorry. Normally I would want to mix it in, know about how much I'm putting in each color, but I'm not gonna do that because I may like this paint without the matte medium in it. So now I'm gonna just do the same thing, slot paint on. I'm trying to get some thin areas and some thick areas because it's the thicker paint that's going to, one, show the glossy. I was doing this because also it'll show the pages sticking together. All right, so I poured some of this out. That's all I jumped on here to say, so I'm gonna go do this. Here's what I did. It got a little muddied. I really wanted it to be semi-thick because that's the only way I'll be able to tell if it's going to stick or not. Once it dries, I'm going to do some writing on it like I did the other one just to document what's going on here in this weird abstracty mess. But that was really fun to do. Here's my beautiful mess. This was a lot of fun to do and play with. When I opened this sketchbook, it did stick together some. You can see the pulling apart there in the middle. This one did not stick together, and this is the one that I did not use any medium, but there's not as much paint either. And you may be looking at this and thinking, ooh, I like this one better because it's so vibrant. I didn't do a really good test because this one, I used really muddied colors, muted. And I also think that I used way too much medium. I just, there were sometimes I forgot to put medium. There were other times that I really put a lot. Also did some documentation to say what this was. And then I wrote some questions here that at some point hopefully I can answer. This page, I did some documentation also. I put what colors I used over here. Just talked about, I think just what I was doing. Over here, I did the colors, I think, without any medium. Yeah, I didn't use any medium. And this is one layer and this is two layers. So that way you can see how transparent just one layer is. And this is with just the water added. I think these kinds of things you really should do a lot because one, they're just super fun. You get to learn your materials. You get to just splash paint around. And I hope that you don't see it as like a waste of paint. Yeah, I hope you don't see it as a waste of paint. If you feel that a lot when you're either painting or playing, you need to try to tell that little thought to go away because that will really hinder you with getting to know your materials. Nothing is a waste. It all goes into final pieces, sellable pieces, or just things that you may like. So there was my little lecture for the day or for the video. I don't know. Maybe I have three lectures in this video. Who knows? I usually like the lectures. Okay, I did decide to do each of the colors with just a little bit of the matte medium and they're still wet. And then I made some notes over here. When I'm doing these pages, I'm not thinking at all about final outcome or what it looks like. This is just really about slapping stuff down, making notes. The final result I think is really fun and pretty, but I'm not thinking about it beforehand. It's just like, just a, I don't know what I'm trying to say. How am I trying to say it? It's just slap it on, have fun, don't think about things. Definitely don't overthink it, just do it. I just got back from the art store and wanted to show you guys what I've decided to invest in. I've been thinking about this for a while and I just decided today, let's just do it. You guys know that I love the Liquitex soft body acrylics, but they are a satin to matte finish, but most of them are satin finish. So in my sketchbooks, they are still sticking together some, which drives me bananas. So I stood at the art store for forever today thinking about the different acrylic washes, which one I wanted to try. And my gut was to stay with the Liquitex for a couple reasons. I know the pigments will be the same. So if I like a color in one, I'm going to like it in another. The consistency will be very similar. I could tell by shaking them. I was standing in the store shaking, listening. So I just decided to go ahead and bite the bullet. I spent like 50 or $60, I think. And I went with my limited, limited, limited palette. Not, no, 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 let me tell you that. Not supersonic limited, but a nice limited. Cause I do think I will like these. I did decide to go ahead and get the titanium white. I wasn't sure if I wanted to do that. I wasn't sure if I just wanted to use some of my acrylic matte paint that I have, but I just decided just go on and get, and I just got a little bottle of that. And then my warm and a cool red, I went with the cad free red light. I love their cad free colors. They are great. I like them even more than the real cads. I love their cad free line. Quinacridone magenta, cause I'm finding I really like that one. I got a cad for yellow light and two blues, the ultramarine blue and then the 
that. I wish I could just do names that I know how to pronounce. Let me just show it to you because I have no idea how to pronounce that. You can pronounce it for yourself. There it is. So basically, I like to get a cool and a warm of red, yellow, and blue. But I have lately just been going with just one yellow. I like to go with a cool yellow because it's very easy to warm it up with just a little kiss of your cad red or really either either red what i'm going to do is put these in smaller tubs just like i've been doing with my soft body acrylic i'm going to put them in little tubs the other thing i'm going to do i found a few acrylic washes that i just randomly have i have two renaissance a magenta and some bluish color i cannot find the name on here at all and then did I already show you this? I have, what brand is this? Holbein Navy Blue. I'm also going to squeeze these in little tubs. The reason is acrylic, if you just squirt it out on your palette, you're going to waste paint. There's something about taking your squeezy tubes and squeezing them in a tub and just dipping your paintbrush in the tub, but you can't guess who just walked in here. Go down, go down. You can lie down right there. Down. He always has to grunt when he's laying down. This will stay wet in the tub. And then when you're done using it, just put the top back on. So I feel like you just can waste a lot of paint if you're just squeezing this out on a palette. It's fine if it's regular wash and you can reconstitute it. Also wanted to show you guys a birthday gift I got. Okay, let me tell you the story behind this birthday gift. I sent Grady an email months and months ago about a book that I had been wanting and I found it at a really great price. It was still expensive. So I was like, hey, could you get this for me now and get it for me for Christmas? Well, like days after that, I was in his office having a Zoom call and I kicked something. And so I looked down to see what it was and there was a box that was, it was obvious it was my book. It was in there for months. And he knew I was going in there like every other week for a Zoom meeting. And I'm thinking, do you not think that I see this? So for my birthday, it was coming up. I was trying to guess, I like trying to guess what I'm getting. And I was like, am I getting that book, <laughs> my Fairfield Porter book that's been under your desk for months? And he said, Sandy, he said, you're not supposed to be looking under there. I'm like, great, I've been having meetings, you know? And he said, well, I don't have anywhere to hide stuff. I'm like, you've got a barn. I never go in the barn. Anyways, he said, well, I've got more stuff under there now, so don't be looking. <laughs> so I guess next week when I have my Zoom meeting with my friend, I guess I'm gonna kind of get an idea of what I'm getting for Christmas. He decided to go on and give me my book for my birthday. Oh, oh. And it's awesome. It's Fairful Porter book. What's it called? Does it have like a name or a title? So I already have one Fairfield Porter book, but I wanted this one also. Okay, this is called Fairfield Porter, an American classic. And it's a honker doozy book. It's huge and it's square. I pulled it out and I was like, oh my gosh, this is like the best experience just to look and hold this thing. So I like this one because the other one I have has a bunch of pictures of his paintings. This one does too. This one has a lot of paintings, but it's also a biography. So I've been reading that. It's used. If you're wondering what's that, we got to use because these are very expensive. Great. It was like, I can't even imagine what that costs like not used. I decided I'm just going to use the book. I was trying to set up, I was wanting to mark, like bend the corners and some of the pages to mark stuff. And Sometimes I feel like, should I do that? And I just thought, it's my book. I want to, it's meant to be in here used as inspiration. So I've been marking corners and stuff. So that was fun. The other thing that came is something I ordered from a good friend of mine who is an artist and an illustrator. She said she put something a little extra. So I did order one of the things in here. So I'm gonna open this. Well, I wanna be real careful. Whoa, she put something big extra in here. Oh, Mel, what did you do? Oh. Okay, she wrapped this in wrapping paper, or like um, tissue paper that she made. I love the tissue paper, Mel. Love it, love it. She did a 2022 calendar with her artwork. It's so cute. And I cannot wait to flip through this. I'm going to hang it in my studio. In fact, I already know where I'm gonna put it. Oh, these are great, Mel. I absolutely love it. Yeah, really nice. I haven't had a calendar from an artist in my studio in quite a while. And usually when I get one, I just leave it up for like five to 10 years because I just do. 
All right, let's see what else she got for me. Okay, here's a card. I'm not gonna open that and read that here. Oh, here's your business card. This is cute. I need to get some business cards. Here's her business card. How cute is that? And here's the back of it. Oh, it's a book she illustrated. Oh my gosh. Everyday Wisdom for Women of All Ages. Pearls for the Girls. How cute. Oh my goodness, Mel. It's kind of nice. I've got like friends who have illustrated books. Thank you, Mel. Oh, it's illustrated so cute. Okay, that's gonna be fun to look at. Thank you, friend. Very special and I cannot wait to sit down and read this. That was fun. I'm going to get all my little pots of paint ready and then I'm gonna just open up my sketchbook and play a little bit. That's what I want to do. Let's hope I have enough pots for my paint. It's really annoying if I don't have exactly enough. Do you know what I mean? Like that really, really bothers me. The only way that I make it okay mentally is I'll get a bigger pot for like the white and then that makes me feel okay. We'll see. Okay, I'm barely gonna have enough, but we'll see. Here's what I decided to do with my acrylic gouache. I put it in this Tupperware. What I'll do is if I'm on a trip and actively using these, I'll take all the lids off and just put this on. But when I'm not using them very often, I'll put their individual little tops back on. And then my random colors, those other random brands I put in this little trio thing. As I'm laying this down, I do feel like it has very much the same consistency as the soft body, not only in the texture, but also in the transparency. Golly, I almost can't even tell a difference. And let's try these Renaissance colors. These, as I dip this in and put it on my palette, I can tell it's got a different binder in it. It's kind of, only the thing I can explain when I have feel this consistency is that it has honey in it. It has a little bit of a drag. It's also more transparent, I can tell. I found that very interesting that that's called navy because it has very much like a marine color to it. Once you add white to it, it's very, I don't know, that's just not navy if you ask me. But I do like this color of the Renaissance a lot. It's very moody. I'm gonna label this first before I forget. We're at the end of the video and I want to give you my thoughts on a lot of the supplies that are new to me and that I've had a long time to try now. So let's first start with the acrylics. I can basically put them all in the same camp. They are nice, they're good. In fact, I really like the consistency of the M Graham. I like it a lot, it's very pigmented, but here's what I found. I'm not going to these because I found that they just have a different sheen to them. And with my Liquitex soft body acrylics or even my Nova paints, which I'll be telling you about the Nova paints more later in another video, those two paints I can use together and I get a similar sheen overall. When I was using these with my Liquitex, I could just tell that it was patchy. I just didn't love it. So I'll use these when I'm in a pinch, but my go-to is still the Liquitex soft body for my paintings. I'm loving the Liquitex acrylic wash. That's great for my sketchbooks, and I'm gonna continue using these. In fact, I've already purchased more colors. The matte medium, the m -Gram matte medium, I'm liking it too. In fact, I probably We'll buy a bigger bottle of this next time. I'm almost out of this. And then the other brand that I've used is right here. Uh, the Golden Fluid Matte Medium. Both of these have the same fluidity and I like it. I don't know that I can tell much of a difference. Right now my go-to is this one only because I can't get the top off of this one. <laughs> I need to get Grady to help me. <laughs> but I've used most of it and now it's just, it's on there. Yeah, it's on there. So usually I just go to whichever one I can get the top off of after running hot water over it and on and on. Yeah, and then if I can't get either one off, then I just use water. I like both of these, but this has been nice. I've enjoyed them both. What I do is put whatever matte medium I'm using in a small old Liquitex bottle. I like it because it's got the squeezy top so I can just squeeze that in whatever I'm using at the time. And also easier to get the top off of and easier to get unstuck if it gets stuck and gupped up, gooped up. The last thing I want to mention is this cheap easel. I'm really liking this, guys. Now, it has already broke. Where's that piece that broke off? Um, I 
thought I had it right here. Where'd you go? Oh. So I found this piece right here on the floor one day. It goes right here. What it does is it basically holds that up that's the top part of what would hold the painting in place. And it just will not screw back in. So there must have been another part in there that fell out or something. I don't know. But basically, I don't need that because when I put my whatever I'm using right here, canvas or board or paper that I've attached to cardboard, gravity just holds that. So that's not a big deal to me. I have saved this for whatever reason because that's just what I do in case I find the other part or realize I do need it, but I don't think I need it. So it did fall apart in that respect, but everything else has held up. And for the price, it's just, it's really nice. And it's super light and just easy to set up. I forgot to mention to you guys with that cheap easel, you can see me using that in last week's video where I paint outside in the snowstorm. I use the setup that I talked about with the cheap easel and then my leader easel palette holder. So you can go check out last week's video. If you didn't already, it is a great video. So make sure to go check it out. It's the extreme painting video and I paint outdoors in a snowstorm and it was so fun. I'll put a link to that here. So what I'm finding myself doing is grabbing this and my leader easel palette holder because that's lightweight and easy to set up too. For me, I'm just needing light and easy. This just is super easy. And I definitely am not using that extra piece that I showed you. It's just extra metal and I just don't need it. I think that's it. That's all we have for this week. I say that's all. This was a really long video. All right, that's a wrap. I'll see you back here next week.